Hey everyone, welcome to another video. My name's Lawrence, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about how you can self compile CrowdStack in three easy steps. Now, you may be asking yourself, why would somebody want to self compile CrowdStack? There are a number of reasons for this, but the main three in my mind are you're not allowed to use any third party repositories on your systems, so you can't use Package Cloud, for example. Another reason is you may want to vet the code um, that's been published since the last version and you want to self compile it from there. Or there is a unreleased feature that's made it into the mainstream repository, but hasn't been generally released as a, a prefix version. However, before we get into the content, I'm going to ask you to like comment and subscribe just to get notified because we're going to be bringing out way more content this year and you're definitely not going to want to miss it. So the first step before building CrowdStack is that you need to install build dependency. And there's only three of them that we need to do. And that is make, ECC, and Golang. However, the last one is a little bit tricky depending on which distribution you are on. So for me, I am running Ubuntu 22.10. And if I go to list out Golang, you can see that I have version 119 from Ubuntu's repositories. This is great because uh, CrowdSec is built with 119 um, and you can't go anything lower than that. So if you run apt list Golang or DNF, if that's your package manager, and you see anything less than 1.19, then you'll need to follow my extra steps that I'm going to do. So firstly, we're gonna to have to install GCC and make. We can run, do this by running sudo apt install GCC make. That's it, took less than a minute and both of those build dependencies are now installed. So I'm gonna show you how you can manually install Golang just because I know that a lot of uh, older distributions are not running 119, so you won't be, uh, you could not be um, lucky enough just to do apt install Golang. If you can, you can run that command instead. If not, you can follow these instructions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the temp directory type, and then we're gonna run wget, and then we're gonna paste in this link. So this link is taken straight from the Golang install website. There's a download button. If you just right click it, click copy link, it will then give you the tar.gz file. Once we have the file, we're just gonna do ls tackle just to make sure that we've got the go package just there. Okay. Once the tar.gz file is downloaded, we can now unzip it into our folder that we need. So for this, we're gonna write tar. Uh, we need to prefix it with sudo if you're not uh, root the box so we're going to do sudo tar extract for so that's x and f as the arguments point it towards the go uh tar.gz file by just typing go hit in tab and it will auto complete from there we'll do tax c capital c and then from there we'll do user slash user so that's usr then slash local this will make sure that it will go into the user local directory on the system. Hitting enter, you might not see any output, but it is definitely being extracted there. We can confirm this if we cd into user and local and run ls la, we should have a go folder. And that means it has worked correctly. The next step though, is we need to um, inform our user profile that when it loads up and builds all the paths that it has this binary in, in its path location. So we'll cd into our home directory. We'll uh, nano in our bash rc file. So I am using bash for, on this machine. However, if you're using a different shell, then you'll change these instructions appropriate to your shell. In the bash rc file, we'll go right to the very bottom. And at the bottom, we'll add path equals dollar sign path colon and then here we'll add user local go bin 
we'll add that to our path directory. If you're using Nano, click Control X, Control and then just Y to make sure that it's being saved to the file. From here now, we'll need to source. You can either log out, log back in, just to get that new bash RC file. If not, you can type source and then give it that bash RC file. We can confirm that this has worked if we run go version. We can see that we have version number 119.5. So these are all the build dependencies that we need to get installed. Now moving over to the clone and build stage. This is when we're going to clone the repository that are on GitHub, and then we're going to build it using those build dependencies that we've bought. For myself personally, I like to change to the opt directive, and I would like to store any of my normally third party repositories or third party like source data inside the opt directive. However, there's one thing to know about this the opt directive is owned by root, so you have to prefix your commands with root until you change the permission on the folder. So for this, we'll do sudo git clone and then type in the address, which is https github.com slash crowd security slash crowdsec. This will now clone the repository into the crowdsec file. That we're done. So if I do ls tech la, we can see that we have a crowdsec folder that's owned by root. However, I want to make sure that my user is the only one that can compile or get access to this. So what I'll do is I'll do sudo change owner loz, loz, which is my username, and then capital R and then crowdsec. Now, if I change into the crowdsec folder and rerun the LS Tech LA, you can see that my user is the owner and also the group that's a part of the, of the one. So now since we've got the repository downloaded, we can now run the build command. For that, we have a make file downloaded. So we'll do make, and then the command inside the make file that we will run is called build. So if you run this, start building CrowdSec from the source. I'm gonna prefix this and say this can take a long time. So I'll see you after it's built. And just like that, CrowdSec is now built and ready to go. Now I'm going to be showing you in the first stage, which is installation, how you can use the wizard.sh file to your advantage. So for installation, there is a wizard.sh file that is stored within the root of the directory. And this will allow you to do a bunch of common upgrade tasks or anything like that. So because CrowdSec is not installed on here at all, we'll do sudo dash wizard .sh. So make sure that you prefix it with dot slash because it's running in the current directory. Well, firstly, let's run it and you'll see all the options. So for me, I need the installation. So that's just dash I. And because I don't want to pick any of the options, I just want CrowdSec to just automatically detect stuff. I'm gonna run it with the flag unattended just because I just rather it just pick up everything and I don't need to pay, manually pick stuff for myself. However, if you do want to do this, just miss off this flag. So hit and enter, we'll now run this, but then check run, and then it will automatically do the acquisition and pick up the stuff. And that is it. That is the installation phase of self compiling yourself. Now that is it, that's CrowdSec installed. So from here, you can run your CSCLI commands, you can run CrowdSec, it's all running um, as normal. So if we do sudo systemctl status CrowdSec, CrowdSec, we'll see that the service is running automatically done what it's doing. From there, we can also do CSCLI metrics. We need to prefix this with C and that uh, we already have lines passing and people coming through. So you can see that we're already picking up on SSH brute force just by running it out of the box. And that's it. We've self-compiled CrowdSec in this video. I hope you find this information very informative. If you do, however, run into any issues, please either open the issue on the GitHub repo or come join us in our Discord community, which is discord.com.
www.ghostbusters.gg slash crowdsec. And don't forget, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much. See you in the next one.